So, uh, um, silicon carbide, power electronics for energy saving. Why are we so obsessed with energy saving? Um, this is a list of our top 10 challenges for the next 50 years. Made by, by Smalley, who is a uh, Nobel laureate in uh, chemistry in the, in the late 90s, and he made a talk some 10 years ago where he listed energy as number one. This can, of course, be discussed, but it is important. So this, this is certainly a an, an, uh, subjective list, but energy is important. And we can say also that uh, I think the, the uh, Earth population is, is growing. So uh, I think a couple of years back we passed some uh, 7 billion people. So the demand is certainly increasing. And uh, our, our energy consumption is average of the order of, of 15 terawatt uh, uh, per year. So uh, if you look now on the, on the energy landscape, so uh, what we do have, so on, on this side we have all, all these uh, ways that we produce energy. Here we have all the, all the ways that, that we consume energy. And most of these here are, are connected to, to a grid. And this, this can be renewable energy, this can be uh, fossil uh, power plants and whatever. In this particular case, it really doesn't matter. It can be PV, it can be wind. And we can also have off-grid things. Off -grid things. Uh, what we are going to address actually by, by the silicon carbide today is this part here where we, where we uh, distribute and uh, transmit the, the electrical power and how much energy can be saved in, in, in this part. And of course, this, this can be, can be uh, quite uh, important actually because this distribution of how, how we, how we uh, transmit energy. One scenario for our future is that if you go for PV, we work a lot with, with uh, photovoltaics, that you could imagine that we have six PV producing plants. So in, on, on the west coast of North America, South America, two in, in Sahara uh, in Africa, and maybe one on, on in, in Asia, Russia, and, and in, in Australia. And uh, so six times this, this is actually what we need. And of course, this, this, all this energy needs, needs to be uh, distributed in an efficient way with, with um, a minimum of losses. So why silicon carbide? Uh, so it's, it's a composition then of silicon and carbon. It is very stable material. It actually it, it, uh, melts somewhere around 2300 degrees C. It has a wide band gap. Annette just discussed band gap. Here I would say what is important is that wide band gap means that the material can be operated at a high temperature. It can be hot and still working. It has also a high thermal conductivity, 10 times larger than silicon. Silicon is, of course, the big contender in many of these things that, that we will discuss. Electrons can be fast, and it has a high breakdown field. So if 10 times larger than silicon. So if you take one centimeter piece of silicon carbide, we can put 10, ten times higher electric voltage over that piece compared to a corresponding silicon. All these fantastic things, why have we not been using it before? Well, we have an issue with materials quality and we have to make devices. That can be challenging. So the material looks like this. So we, we, have, we have silicon atoms, we have carbon atoms, and they are separated by roughly two angstrom. So now you know what an angstrom is. So that is, uh, you you'd have a nanometer and you divide it by 10. So this, uh, thank you, Annette, for explaining the, the, the length scale here. And so this, this, this is these bilayers, and then they can be packed in three different ways. And so we, we, we stack them in either uh, what we call an A way or B way or a C way. And 
this, how we pack these layers, that gives different materials quality. And the one that is used for in the power electronics is the four, so-called 4H polytype. So we do a stacking sequence of A, B, A, C, and then we start all over again. Over many years, uh, I would say that, th that the research in silicon carbide started in, 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 uh, seriously in around 1960. And it really took off maybe around 1990, something like that. There are always waves in, in these developments. But the main issue for many years was what we call micropipes, simply holes, literally holes in, in, in the material. They're going through the whole, whole, whole crystal. And this, this is the dimension of, of maybe, maybe one micron or so. But so that stopped all this development, or actually what was, was a very big uh, challenge, a very big hurdle for, for the development of, of, of the silicon carbide technology. But this has now been resolved through a continuous uh, development and cleaning up the processes, how, how you grow the crystal. This is actually now, now a result. And what we do have today is that uh, uh, we can actually commercially buy silicon carbide wafers with a diameter up to uh, 150 millimeter, which I think is, is next after silicon is, 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 is the biggest uh, semiconductor wafers you, 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 you can have. And this is, uh, uh, they are a little bit more expensive than the silicon. This is what we use in our lab. So this is a 100 millimeter wafer, and uh, if you take a silicon wafer of this size, it would be maybe a few hundred Norwegian kroner. If you take this one, maybe you have to multiply that by 20, let's say 5,000 5, uh, Norwegian kroner. So it's, so it's a little bit more expensive, and, uh, but uh, you will see at the end we, we, we will gain. And. Uh, so uh, the big players, the, the, the companies, they are now in, in the 150 millimeter area. And we just came back from a silicon carbide conference last week, and in 2018 there will be 200 millimeter wafers available. So what can we do? I said it, it can stand very high temperatures. So this is, a, this is a sensor that we have made out of silicon carbide. So what we do have here is that we have a substrate which is not so pure, and then we, are, we have a so-called epilayer. Everything is silicon carbide, which is very pure, but it's just 10 micrometer thick, so it's rather thin. And we make it thin because it's expensive to, to make whole, the whole wafer uh, of this high quality. And then we have put down a, a dielectric here, aluminum oxide, by a technique called atomic layer deposition, and then we have a catalytic metal on the top, palladium. And in reality, it, 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 it looks like this. And what is the good thing here? We can use it as a gas sensor. And this is done at 500 degrees C. So for instance, if, if, we, if we want to go and, and we uh, want to look for, for, for hydrogen, or we want to look for oxygen when we do uh, oil drilling, which is where temperature is really elevated up to maybe three, 400 degrees C, we can use a sensor of this type. This is not possible in any uh, other available semiconductor material today to do this at, at such a high temperature. In power electronics, which is, I would say, the, the, the main application of silicon carbide. Uh, I said it, it can take very high voltages. So this is what we call a diode. So we have current here, and we have voltage here. So this is simply a breaker. So it should, it should uh, conduct a lot of current in this direction and nothing in this direction. And here you can put a voltage up to 27 kilovolt maybe even higher, because the, the, the current here, it could actually extend even further. But this was actually limited by the measurement set up. This was from a Japanese group published uh, last year. And this is actually a world record for a solid state electronic device. So it can block, device, block, block voltages up, up to uh, maybe 30 kilovolt or even more. 
this this is really 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 uh, astonishing i would say and 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 have a very con uh, high conduction in, in in the forward direction so this this is a very efficient switch i said switch efficient so what we do have, and what we do when, when, when we transmit our energy is that, that we turn off and we turn on. And during that turn off and turn on, we lose a lot of energy. It's just waste. And what we see here is the current versus time as we switch. So if, if we come from a very high current and then we want to turn it off, and then we, we should actually want it to, we would like it to, to, to turn off immediately. So the, 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 the current should, should be zero. But if you take the silicon, which we, which we uh, use primarily today, and this is what we call a fast recovery diode, we have an over, we have, well, I shouldn't say overshoot, we have an undershoot here. So all, all this here, this is charge, this is current that just goes, to, uh, dissipates to, to heat. This is loss. But if, if we do it in silicon carbide, because the electrons are fast, we can use very high voltages, so we, 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 we can transport the electrons very quickly, then we can, then we can reduce these losses by, by two-thirds. And uh, that makes a big difference. So this time that it takes, we call this, this reverse recovery time, you can see this, how it depends on temperature, because these are high powers. So we, we, we speak about 100 of amperes per centimeter squared. And you can see in the silicon carbide case, there is essentially no dependence on temperature. As things get hot, no problem. In silicon, we have a problem, because the, now, now the, this time becomes longer and longer. And this is actually, uh, I would say, that we, we could say that the advantage is here, we have low losses, we have very efficient power conversion, we don't need very big heat sinks as, as we usually do in, in, in our transformers. And we, we don't need very bulky cooling things. We don't need a lot of cooling water and so on to, to, to uh, realize this. And this is uh, going commercial. So in the Tesla car, which is very popular in Norway, as we know, there is actually silicon carbide electronics in, in, in this car. And this is simply because we, uh, there is not much cooling required and it can be made very compact. So silicon carbide, if we go it in the power electronics side, if we make this short, where will it actually be used? It will be used in this end here, which we call power, power electronics. So we go with very high voltages, more than 1,000 volt, and in the high-end solutions, meaning that we, that we have rather high currents. So silicon carbide is for power, power. The other areas here are covered by other materials, in particular silicon and to some extent gallium nitride. So silicon carbide can displace silicon for instance, in the power distribution, in, in what we call the PV inverters, where we, where we transport energy from, from our solar cells out to the grid, in the automotive uh, area, our EV and HEV, uh, and also on, of course, on, on, on the wind turbines. So it's up here, very high uh, powers that, that uh, Silicon carbide has, has really its, its benefits. So uh, here are the, the added values. So it's actually all based on, on, on the material properties. So low losses, less cooling, and reduced system size. So our, our big transformer stations can be reduced to very, very small, small units. Orders of magnitude less in, in size. So if you look on the silicon carbide uh, market, this is a forecast, of course. So we have on this uh, axis, we have market size in, in a million uh, US. So we are at the top here, maybe one billion euro. And you can see it's predicted that we have a break here in the growth, somewhere around where we are now. 
and so the growth uh, increases by, by uh, maybe 50% or so. And this is supposed then to happen around here where we are now. And you can see the main reason for, for the growth in the silicon cover is this, this uh, sort of uh, half yellow. So it's in the PV inverters. So this is for, trans for a transformation of, of, of solar energy. And this part here that goes with, with, with uh, electric vehicles. We have to keep on moving yes. to the panel. Yes, okay. So then I will just conclude here, saying that uh, in the US, if you just take the US as an example, that 30% of the electricity usage is for lightning and transmission and distribution. And with the silicon carbide technology, maybe we can reduce that to 10%. And that means that we can close something like 100 power plants. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you. We have to be really quick. I will give you one minute. So, pass questions and answers. Thank you. You, you told us about Tesla. C could you just explain to us uh, from a kind of a user uh, perspective, which areas will we kind of see in the kind of near future where I as a consumer can relate to some of the technology? You can see, if, if, if we go with this uh, prediction here, so these things here, this, these are the uh, electric cars. So you, you will see silicon carbide technology growth in, in electric cars. You will see silicon carbide growth in, in the, in the, in the uh, distribution of, of renewable energy. What, what would you say is, uh, is um, where would the big changes be? I mean, what, what is the limitations? for taking this uh, in use? Uh, cost and performance. So, as, as I said, the material is expensive, but so, so, uh, it, uh, so you, you, it's... Uh, but the volumes are increasing, means that, that the costs are reduced. So, uh, in many of these markets, uh, cost is no longer an issue. So in, in not in the next Toyota, but in, in the next, to, that one that will be launched with, with the hybrid vehicles will be silicon carbide electronics in that. And that is, is so this, this is this part here. Thank you, thank yes. you so much.